Thank you. So as was mentioned, I work with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association. We represent about 850 fiber broadband providers, all of whom are locally operated throughout rural areas of the United States. These companies typically have about 6,500 customer accounts and their service areas have a population density of between seven and nine people per square mile. So those same rural conditions that affect the ability to provide broadband to those spaces also affects the ability to find access to adequate health care in those spaces as well. Rural areas have higher incidences of chronic and acute medical conditions, including heart disease, cancer, unintentional injury, diabetes, COPD, and counterparts in urban spaces. At the same time, there is a shortage of specialists. 66% of healthcare provider shortage areas are actually in rural counties and distance from facilities. Rural residents are about twice as far from a hospital as their urban counterparts. These same issues also confound the ability to address substance use disorder effectively in rural spaces. Rural spaces have higher incidences of substance use disorder. It starts at an earlier age, whether it is for alcohol or other drugs. It just is a more prevalent problem often in some rural spaces than in urban areas as well. And those same issues that affect healthcare generally in rural areas in terms of the spread of population, the lack of money, the lack of resources, the distance of facilities affects effective treatment of substance use disorder as well. So again, it's lack of access to professionals, it's distance. And then again, in rural areas, there might be cultural conditions that affect the ability to treat substance use disorder effectively. Telehealth can answer a lot of these challenges. Telehealth enables better health outcomes, cost savings, access to experts, monitoring for chronic conditions. It encourages compliance. And in many of these instances, these are just based on the ability to facilitate patient-physician interaction more effectively without the need for a long drive to a hospital, without the need to be in a waiting room, without the need to make a choice. Do I need to take a half a day off of work to go visit the doctor? Or can I open up my laptop and spend 30 minutes with that physician interaction in the comfort of my own home, my office, my living room, rather than have to drive to the doctor, wait perhaps for a while in the waiting room before I finally get called in. NTCA Smart Rural Community did a report several years ago, and we took a look not only at the health outcomes that accrue from the Department of Telehealth and Rural Spaces, but the financial and the economic benefits as well. And these are categorized into two columns. One of them are avoided cost savings, and the other one is actual revenue generators. So on the avoided cost side, what we find is that travel expense savings were close to $6,000 per facility per year. Gasoline, wear and tear, and transportation costs patients to get to the hospital. Lost wages savings per facility were on the order of close to $3,500 per year. Hospital cost savings were more than $20,000 a year, again, because of early intervention, monitoring, and compliance improved with telehealth. In terms of actual economic benefits, again, these are actual positive impacts on the ledger. Pharmacy and a lab revenues increase in rural areas. Why? Because a patient is now at home in his or her home community conducting that interaction with a physician. Physician issues an order for pharmacy or lab work. That lab work is done locally rather than at the hospital or the pharmacy may be 40 miles away where the patient otherwise would have gone without telehealth. So again, this is just really a very broad introduction to the issues. And I look forward to the conversation this morning. Thank you. Mm-hmm.